Hi everyone, this is Arvind with GameTextures.com. In this lesson, we cover how to take a game texture substance, export out some bitmaps, and render it in Modo. Let's go ahead and get started. Let's first set up our Modo file. So what I have here is a simple you know, shader sphere, and this is where we're going to be applying our material. I also have a just a simple HDR background. Let's go ahead and double click our object. And if we hit M, we're able to assign it a material. So I'm just going to call it Moto Demo Material. And for our material type, instead of having it as a default material, which we're going to be staying in Moto, we're going to be rendering in Moto. Uh, but instead of using this, we're going to use uh, an Unreal material. And the primary reason for that is because by default, the default material has some problems with rendering out a normal map in conjunction with a displacement map. So what we're actually going to do is assign this as an Unreal material and then layer a base material under it for our displacement. All right, so we'll go ahead and hit OK. And notice here we go, we've got a, a better material sh better material shading here in the viewport already. Uh, we're getting some GI on this sphere. And let's go ahead and open up Substance Player and tweak our material. So I'll um, navigate to my SBSAR file. So here's the ground material we're working with. Right, I opened it up in Substance Player. For those of you that aren't familiar with Substance Player, it's a free tool you can download from algorithmic.com that allows you to open up any Substance file and tweak it. So we're going to go ahead and make some adjustments here. Let's increase the amount of rocks. And let's increase the rock level. So what you'll see is as I adjust this, more of the rocks will pop through. Cool. And let's um, maybe adjust the grass level and increase the amount of grass we're seeing. All right, and it's really hard to visualize it at this point, but the nice thing is we're able to tweak these sliders really easily. So I think this is pretty good, but let's go ahead and preview it at 1K. All right, so we may decide, hey, at 1K, there's a little too much rocks. So let's go ahead and tone down the rock level. There we go. And they're, they're less penetrating in the surface now. All right. So let's say we're pretty satisfied with this at this point. Let's change our output size from 1024 to 2048. And here we go. Nice, crisp, clean. And we'll hit export bitmap. Now, by default, this is already saving to my Moto project folder. If you don't want it to save there or it's at some arbitrary folder, you can hit browse and navigate to that folder. But I, I don't want all of the textures to be dumped in that one folder. I actually want it to be in a subfolder. So I'm going to hit the uh, slash and I'm going to create a subfolder called dry rocky mud and for the basic pattern name I'm gonna call it the same thing dry rocky mud what this does is it'll name all of my outputs dry rocky mud underscore and then whatever my output name is so whether that's albedo normal glossiness etc now I don't need all of these uh, texture outputs I just need a few of them. So I'm going to click the ones that I want. Base color, normal, roughness, and height. And then I'll hit export. Okay. So it pushes all those out. And we're able to now close Substance Player. Back inside Modo, we'll go ahead and import those files. So I'm going to quickly navigate that folder and here are my four texture maps I'm gonna select them and drag and drop them 
into my material mask. And what you'll see is by default, there's not really much that happened here. The reason for that is because everything is being processed as an unreal material. That means it doesn't really know what to do with the diffuse color channel. It wants to process a, an unreal channel. So if we click this, let's say our base color right here, go to Unreal and select Unreal Base Color. Let's hide all of these. Right. We are now able to see that base color. Let's now do the same thing for Normal and Roughness. So for Normal, I'm going to change this from Diffuse Color, go to Unreal, and select Normal. All right, now it asks me this question, the clip is using color correction, do you want to set it to none? For this one, we do want to say yes. If we're rendering with the Moto internal renderer, we do want to say yes. Now, if, you know, for some reason we're processing this and shooting it into Unreal or whatever else, we may want to uh, leave it as is. But for the Moto internal, we'll hit yes. And notice we get some better results there. All right. For Roughness, again, we're going to go to Unreal, Roughness, right? And that controls some of our um, shiny spots, essentially, on our dirt. And then this is where it'll get a little weird. So Dry Rocky Mud Height, we don't have anything in Unreal that's complementary to a displacement the channel that we usually map this to is Unreal Bump. But as you notice, it doesn't really do much. So what we'll actually do is literally map this to displacement, a traditional Moto displacement. And what we can do is the base material underneath can control just the displacement. All right, so here we go. If we just click and drag this base material that's underneath, we can actually control the displacement amount that we have. So all of the textures, the base color, the normal, and the roughness are controlled by the Unreal material, but displacement is handled by the default Modo material underneath it. All right, so let's go ahead and finalize this and get a nice, pretty nice render out of it. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is tone down my normals a little bit. So notice we're getting, we've got a, a nice surface here, but to some degree, in my opinion, it's getting a little too crunchy. So I'm just going to select my normal here, and I'm going to set this to maybe 75%. That way, some of the, the uh, angles there are just a little bit softer. The other thing I'm going to do is go over to my base material and lessen the displacement distance by just a hair. So instead of, you know, 50 millimeters, let's say we set it at 30 millimeters. See how that turns out. Yeah, that's good. It's nice. Just little bumps. And then lastly, uh, if we go over to render and settings, We'll switch our uh, micro displacement at one. Let's uh, let's set that also at 0.75, which will give our displacements a little bit of a uh, finer subdivision to work with. Right. Let's zoom this out just a hair. Let's maybe tweak our gamma just a little bit. So right now it's at 0.8. Let's switch it to maybe 0.7. Yeah, that looks that looks good. And then let's clamp our white level. So we're doing some uh, some post edits here just a little bit. There we go. Um, and let's see if we want to. Let's maybe go ahead and turn off our directional light. So this way, we're just sliding it with the environment map. And let's go ahead and bring this up. So let's set this to maybe two.
you know, and make some a few little tweaks here. Uh, let's en enable environmental sampling. Switch the uh, caching to just a second bounds, and maybe bump up the indirect samples to 256. Right. And at this point too, since we turned off that main light, we could probably afford to make the normal map at a full 100% to catch more of those shadows. Clamp this just a little more. And let's degamma it just a hair more to get a little more contrast there. All right, I think I'm pretty happy with that. So let's zoom out just a hair more. And let's run a quick render. All right, now it's not perfect. There's obviously a couple of things more that we could do with this. But with a little bit of information there, we were able to uh, get our material into Moto, uh, make a couple of little tweaks in the material to refine how it looks in the internal renderer, and manage to mix a normal map with a displacement map. Uh, I hope that helped out. Thank you guys, and until next time, happy texturing.